The U.S. Air Force just released new video showing what the Air Force calls an unnecessarily aggressive maneuver by a Chinese military pilot right in front of a U.S. aircraft. By selecting four new Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement EDCA, locations in the Philippines, the United States has made a bold and controversial move that has ignited debate about its broader geopolitical objectives in the Indo-Pacific region. Beneath layers of diplomatic maneuvers and strategic secrecy, this decision has raised significant questions regarding the true motivations behind these choices. Is it a calculated diversion from China's rising assertiveness, a strategic effort to strengthen ties within the region, or a daring step that could embroil the Philippines in an imminent geopolitical conflict? As the Philippines finds itself at the epicenter of global power dynamics, attention is squarely focused on how these developments will shape regional alliances and tensions. The Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement EDCA, is a significant pact between the United States and the Philippines aimed at bolstering the military alliance between the two countries. This agreement allows the U.S. to rotate troops into the Philippines for extended periods and construct and operate facilities on Philippine military bases, which can be used by both American and Filipino forces. Importantly, the EDCA prohibits the establishment of permanent U.S. military bases while the Philippines retains ownership of the sites and access to U.S. ships and aircraft. The EDCO was signed on April 28, 2014 by Philippine Defense Secretary Voltaire Gasman and U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, Philip Goldberg in Manila, just before U.S. President Barack Obama's meeting with Philippine President Benigno Noynoy Aquino. To our gracious hosts, President Aquino, to the Alliance, that keeps us strong and free, and to the friendship between our peoples. May it always endure across the ocean and in our hearts. Bye boy. Despite facing legal challenges and political opposition, particularly from former President Rodrigo Duterte, the agreement was upheld by the Philippine Supreme Court in 2016, affirming its legality and its importance in strengthening the U.S.-Philippine alliance. Ambassador Goldberg emphasized that the EDCA's primary objective is to promote peace and security in the region. The EDCA will increase training opportunities for U.S. and Philippine forces, which will contribute to increased interoperability. It will also support the shared goal of promoting the long-term modernization of the armed forces of the Philippines. The agreement supplements the 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty and the 1999 Visiting Forces Agreement, reaffirming mutual cooperation between the U.S. and the Philippines in enhancing their individual and collective defense capabilities. It allows the U.S. military to pre-position defense equipment and supplies at agreed locations within the Philippines, ensuring that the materials do not include nuclear weapons. These provisions are designed to improve the interoperability of the two countries' armed forces, support long-term modernization efforts, enhance maritime security, and expand humanitarian assistance and disaster response capabilities. While U.S. forces may exercise operational control and station personnel and equipment at these agreed locations, the Philippines retains sovereignty over these sites. Additionally, the agreement specifies that all facilities constructed under the EDCA must be turned over to the Philippine government upon the agreement's conclusion. The EDCA, initially effective for 10 years, automatically renews unless either party decides to terminate it with a one-year notice. The U.S. has strategically identified four new sites under the EDCA in the Philippines, reflecting a careful blend of strategic, operational, and diplomatic considerations. This renewed partnership, which has gained momentum under Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., marks a significant step forward in U.S.-Philippine defense cooperation. All the uh, things that we are doing together um, in terms of our alliance, in terms of the specific context of our situation here in the West Philippine Sea and in the Indo-Pacific. On April 3rd, the U.S. announced the establishment of these new EDCA sites, which include the Camilo Osayas Naval Base in Cagayan, Camp Melchor de la Cruz in Isabela, Lalo Airport in Cagayan, and Balabac Island in Palawan. 
These new sites, along with the five existing EDCA locations, are intended to enhance the interoperability of the U.S. and Philippine Armed Forces, allowing for more seamless joint responses to various challenges in the Indo-Pacific region, including natural and humanitarian disasters. The EDCA permits the U.S. to rotate forces and access agreed-upon Philippine military bases where they can construct storage facilities and pre-position equipment. However, the agreement prohibits the establishment of permanent U.S. bases. The selected sites reflect strategic priorities. While Balabac Island is near the South China Sea, three of the new sites, Camilo Osias Naval Base, Camp Melkor de la Cruz, and Lao Lo Airport, are located in northern Luzon, closer to Taiwan. This positioning enhances the capabilities of the Armed Forces of the Philippines AFP, for naval and air operations in the Luzon Strait and Venom Rise. The Luzon Strait is a critical waterway that separates the Philippines from Taiwan and serves as a strategic link between the South China Sea and the Philippine Sea, crucial for Chinese warships entering the Western Pacific. Benham Rice, located 250 kilometers east of Luzon, is a part of the Philippines' continental shelf, recognized in 2012, but has been the subject of illegal seabed surveys by China. China has strongly opposed the development of EDCA, accusing the U.S. of using it as a foothold to interfere in a Taiwan Strait crisis or to launch attacks on China. Beijing's objections extend beyond the specific locations, reflecting broader concerns about deepening U.S.-Philippine security cooperation. During the Duterte administration, China exerted significant influence over Philippine foreign policy but it is now frustrated by the current Philippine government's less accommodating stance. China's ambassador to the Philippines, Huang Xilian, has expressed concerns, stating that the U.S. clearly intends to use the new EDCA sites to interfere in the Taiwan Strait situation, furthering its geopolitical agenda at the expense of peace and development in the Philippines and the region. The U.S. initially allocated $82 million for infrastructure development at the five existing EDCA sites, which has now been increased to $100 million to include the new locations. The existing sites are Basa Air Base in Pampanga, Fort Magsaysay in Nueva Ecija, Antonio Bautista Air Base in Palawan, Benito Ebuen Air Base in Cebu, and Lumbia Air Base in Cagayan de Oro. While 15 infrastructure projects are planned across these sites, only five have been completed so far. In Palawan, for example, Projects include a warehouse for humanitarian assistance and disaster relief HEDER, a fuel tank, and a command and control C2 fusion center. Work on the 2.8-kilometer runway at Basa Air Base began in March and is expected to be completed by September. Additionally, construction has started on a 3-kilometer runway on Balabac Island, which will also feature a HEDER warehouse, barracks, and other military facilities. These initiatives enhance the ability of the AFP and U.S. military to conduct bilateral training, such as the annual Balakatan exercises, and bolster both nations' resilience for missions like HDR and national defense. Despite China's opposition, the U.S. Department of Defense has affirmed its commitment to working with the Philippines on new opportunities that benefit both countries, and additional EDCA sites may be announced in the future. AFP spokesperson Colonel Medel Aguilar stated, Expanding EDCA is possible. As an archipelagic country with numerous islands and an extensive coastline, the AFP must have 360-degree protection capabilities to safeguard our sovereignty, territorial integrity, and maritime resources. The Defense Department will continue to collaborate closely with the Philippine Department of National Defense and Armed Forces to accelerate modernization projects in these areas. For over seven decades, the United States and the Philippines have stood together unwavering in our treaty commitments and shared vision for a more peaceful, secure, and prosperous region. The department noted, a State Department statement emphasized that U.S.-Philippine relations are founded on strong historical and cultural ties, as well as a shared commitment to democracy and human rights. 
The Mutual Defense Treaty of 1951 serves as the cornerstone of the post-World War II security alliance between the two nations. While robust people-to-people -people connections and economic cooperation open new avenues for collaboration on a range of bilateral, regional, and global issues. Since its signing in 2014, ADCA has experienced delays, but it has recently gained renewed momentum, particularly in response to Beijing's aggressive actions in the South China Sea. In April 2024, significant developments included a combined maritime cooperative activity in the South China Sea by Australia, Japan, the Philippines, and the United States, as well as a trilateral conference between Japan, the Philippines, and the United States to promote a free and open Indo-Pacific. We meet today as friends and partners bound by a shared vision and pursuit of a peaceful, stable, and prosperous Indo-Pacific. To build an Indo-Pacific that is free, open, prosperous, and secure for all. Japan, the U.S. and the Philippines are maritime nations connected by the Pacific Ocean and our natural partners. Despite initial legal challenges and political opposition, especially from former President Duterte, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. revitalized EDCA with the announcement of new locations and increased funding. The selection of the new EDCA locations was based on several critical factors. One of the primary considerations was the strategic proximity of these sites to potential conflict zones, particularly the South China Sea. This positioning allows for faster response times and strengthens the deterrent posture of the U.S. and the Philippines against aggressive actions by regional powers, especially China. The selected sites are also crucial for maintaining reliable logistical and supply chains, which are essential for sustaining long-term military operations. These locations enable the smooth movement of personnel, equipment, and supplies, ensuring that both U.S. and Philippine forces receive the necessary support during any conflict or humanitarian mission. Another important criterion for the selection of these sites was their capacity to support a wide range of military missions. These missions include air and naval patrols, training exercises, disaster response, and other joint activities. The versatility of these sites is essential for addressing the diverse security challenges in the region. Furthermore, locations with existing military infrastructure were preferred, as they can be upgraded more efficiently to meet the operational requirements of both countries. The selection process also took into account the accessibility of these sites for both U.S. and Philippine forces, ensuring that they are easily reachable during times of crisis. In the coastal town of Santa Ana, a municipality in the province of Cagayan, northern Luzon, the landscape of international security is rapidly changing. Known primarily for its untouched beauty and role in the burgeoning Cagayan Special Economic Zone, Santa Ana has now found itself thrust into the geopolitical limelight. This shift is due to its selection as one of nine newly designated locations for the U.S. military's Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement in the Philippines, bringing the town to the forefront of tensions between the United States and China. The U.S. military's presence in Santa Ana, along with the other newly established EDCA sites, represents a significant strategic pivot, particularly in the context of regional security dynamics. In previous decades, the U.S. operated extensive bases throughout the Philippines, including the sprawling Subic Bay Naval Base and Clark Air Base. These bases played crucial roles in both the Vietnam War and the Cold War, but were eventually closed following the Philippine Senate's 1991 decision to end the U.S. military presence on its soil. The recent establishment of smaller, strategically positioned sites under EDCA marks a departure from those large-scale installations and reflects a shift in U.S. military strategy. This shift in strategy is evident in the recent Balakatan military exercises held annually to demonstrate the strength and readiness of the U.S.-Philippine alliance. These exercises are among the largest in recent history, featuring 17,000 troops from both countries, along with forces from Australia. For the first time, the drills included activities at several of the new EDCA sites, including Santa Ana. These exercises, which simulated the defense of small islands against potential aggressors, highlight the importance of the new locations in the broader U.S. strategy to counter China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific region. As the construction of infrastructure at the new EDCA sites progresses, 
the local communities and government officials in the affected areas face a myriad of challenges and concerns. For Santa Ana, the influx of U.S. military personnel and the construction of new facilities raise questions about the potential impact on the local economy, environment, and social fabric. While the presence of U.S. forces is expected to bring economic opportunities, such as increased demand for goods and services, it also poses risks, including environmental degradation, displacement of local communities, and possible social tensions. The announcement of the new EDCA sites has not been without its share of challenges and controversies. Local opposition has emerged in various parts of the Philippines, particularly in the northern province of Cagayan, where the new sites are located. Residents and local officials have expressed concerns about the potential environmental impact of the new military facilities, including the destruction of natural habitats and the displacement of communities. Additionally, there is apprehension about the social implications of increased U.S. military presence, such as potential increases in crime and other social issues. The expansion of EDCA has also sparked a national debate over the issue of Philippine sovereignty. Critics argue that the establishment of new U.S. military sites undermines the Philippines' sovereignty and exposes the country to the risks of being drawn into broader geopolitical conflicts, particularly between the U.S. and China. They contend that hosting additional U.S. military facilities could erode the Philippines' autonomy in foreign policy decisions and limit its ability to navigate regional issues independently. Public opinion on the expansion of EDCA is divided. While some Filipinos support the agreement as a means of enhancing national security and deterring external threats, others are concerned about the potential consequences for the country's independence and regional standing. Polls indicate that nearly half of Filipinos are opposed to the expansion of U.S. military presence in the country, fearing that it could entangle the Philippines in global conflicts and diminish its regional influence. The EDCA expansion also has significant diplomatic implications for the Philippines' relationships with its neighbors and other major powers. China's reaction to the announcement of new EDCA sites has been swift and negative. Beijing views the expansion as a direct threat to its interests in the South China Sea and a challenge to its regional dominance. In response, China has increased its military presence in the contested waters and conducted a series of naval exercises near the Philippines. These actions have further strained relations between Manila and Beijing and complicated efforts to resolve territorial disputes through diplomatic means. On the other hand, the U.S. sees the EDCA expansion as a vital component of its broader strategy to counter China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific. By strengthening its military presence in the region and deepening its alliance with the Philippines, the U.S. aims to deter Chinese aggression and maintain stability in the South China Sea. However, this approach risks escalating tensions and could lead to a more confrontational relationship between the U.S. and China with the Philippines caught in the middle.